All right, um, today we're going to be working through uh, graphing quadratics. This is a presentation I'm going to be giving in class, um, but uh, this is something you could reference when you're at home working on problems. Um, we're going to be graphing quadratics using vertices, concavity, and roots to sketch them. Obviously, we're not looking for particularly thorough gra graphs because we have the technology now to where we um, don't need to be really thorough in these graphs, but it's really important because it helps us kind of get an idea for what vertices are, what concavity means, and how the roots apply to the way that these graphs can be represented. All right, so suppose I asked you to sketch the following graph. So uh, the quadratic function is negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. Um, in order to do this, uh, we need to have kind of a clear-cut procedure in order to go in and make this happen. Otherwise, this can get really overwhelming all at once. So uh, I personally like to start with uh, determining the concavity. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, I determine my a value, which is negative 2, because the, a, the uh, a value is attached here to the quadratic term. The b is 4. That's the thing attached to x. And the c is negative 1. In future problems, if you don't see any of these things represented, then their values are 0. So if you don't see an x term, the b value is 0. All right, now, since I know the a value is negative, uh, I know the parabola will be concave down. Um, the more crude terminology for this is that it opens down. Um, I'm going to really encourage you guys to use uh, concave up and concave down. In this case, since a is negative, a is negative 2. It doesn't matter what a is, negative 5, negative 8, negative 0.12, negative banana. It doesn't matter. It's going to be concave down. Okay, and that's the shape it would make. Now, just because I know concavity, that doesn't mean I can really do anything just yet. So now I need to find the vertex. Um, vertex is a set of coordinates, so I need to find the x and the y. Uh, to find the x, I need to know the axis of symmetry. And that's just very simply calculated, negative b over 2a. And if we do this calculation, um, I like to think of it as a sign switch. So if I have a positive, a positive, and a negative, um, then the negative out front, this thing here, is going to just end up changing that sign anyway. So that's going to come out to be 1. All right, now, I know that's the uh, axis of symmetry. I know that's the x-coordinate. So I know it's going to be somewhere along this line here. Okay, it's just a question of where. Now I need the y-coordinate to tell me exactly where that is. So now, for the local maximum, because it's a local maximum because it's concave down, I plug in x minus 1. Oh, I'm sorry, blech, x equals 1. So I end up finding that the y value here is 1. All right, so now I know the coordinates are at 1, 1, and my vertex is there-ish. All right, now I know where the vertex is, and I know it's concave. I know that it's going to end up opening down, so it's going to end up hitting the x-axis twice. I need to find out where that is exactly. So now I need to determine the roots. All right, so I have these values here. A is negative 2, B is 4, C is negative 1. Uh, I always want to try factoring first. I feel like that's the most straightforward way to find the roots. And I'm going to look at this thing just as a trinomial. I'm going to take these numbers here, the A and the C, multiply those together, and I get 2. And now I need to find factors of 2, which add up to the B value, which is 4. So that's what this line here means. Well, rather quickly, I'm going to see that's actually not going to work. So, uh, I can't factor it, which for a lot of folks would communicate to them it's time to pack up and go home, but you guys know better. Uh, now we need to use the quadratic formula, because the quadratic formula works forever and ever. It's a little bit clunkier than factoring, so we should always try factoring first, um, but it still always works. It's very versatile. All right, so I calculated the discriminant first. Uh, that's b squared minus 4ac. Uh, that ends up coming out to 8. Um, I like to calculate the discriminant separately uh, because um, it's easier to just kind of pop that thing into the formula. Um, obviously, since the discriminant is positive, there are two solutions, but we already knew that because the vertex is above the x-axis and it opens down, so it has to hit the x-axis twice. All right, now we pop that in the quadratic formula. 
All right, so negative b plus or minus square root of the discriminant over 2a. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify that square root. Square root of 8 simplifies to 2 square root of 2. Um, we've done this a lot in class, uh, but uh, you should check your notes on this one. All right, so I come out with something like this. All right, now, that means there's two roots, and I need to find out exactly where they are because these are not pretty numbers, but it's all right. We can use decimals. That still gives us a really good picture of what we're looking at here. So first, I'm going to work with the negative. Negative 4 minus 2 square root of 2 over negative 4. Simplify that down to 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. It's about 1.7. There's one of my roots. All right, now I'm going to do the other one, uh, where I use the minus that time. I'm going to use the plus this time. I find it's at 0 0.2. That's where the other root is. Okay, so about. Obviously, these are huge dots, but we get the picture. All right, so we know where the roots are. We know where the vertex is. Everything else, it's not particularly important. It's a total wash. So just a rough sketch. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and put it all together and sketch it. And this is my final result. As you can see, my vertex here is at 1, 1. This one here is about 0 0.2. This one here is about 1.7. And uh, that should do it. Um, make sure you're taking note of uh, tying the discriminant, the number of solutions, into where the vertex is and its concavity. Um, always be thinking about that so that you kind of uh, know where you're going from there. Because obviously if there's no solutions, all you need to find is the vertex and where it opens. And uh, that should do it. All right, uh, thank you so much for paying attention all the way to the end of the video. I know that you guys have had a monk-like discipline in writing everything down. Um, I'm going to turn you loose on the rest of the homework, and I wish you the best of luck.